Welcome back to my Dynasty series, Why Make Vanderbilt Relevant, as this week we have a triple header in the SEC with South Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. It won't be easy as we got absolutely demolished by Georgia last week, thanks to Branson Robinson running wild on us, brother, shedding multiple tackles on lengthy touchdown runs, but we are still ranked 23rd in the nation despite a brutal beatdown at the hands of the Bulldogs. Due to Nate Johnson's superb Heisman season, he did fall down a tier, but he is still firm in the race for the Heisman. Now, South Carolina... It is substantially better than us with B pluses across the board, but this is an important game as we had three key visits from Anthony Miller, Kent Brown, and Reggie Bates watching us come play the Gamecocks. No longer Spencer Rattler at quarterback as Luke Doty's leading the charge. He has all day in the pocket before unleashing a down on the left side to Trey Cameron, a gain of 22. Now with this momentum running, he's going to have a play action. Those running back McDowell before uncorking a beautiful throw to Harbor over in the scene. And CJ Taylor just stands there and watches Harbor. He gets a 33-yard catch before he unleashes a slant to Omega Blake and Fontenay misses the tackle, putting South Carolina up 7-0 early on. Now we have a new running back in the backfield, Barrett Jr. We replaced him over Cedric Alexander to give us a little more juice. He has 94 speed, so we're going to try to use him here on this read option, but they take Barrett Jr. Johnson has speed to the outside. He spins but get wrapped up only for a gain of six. Now trying to find Barrett Jr. in the flat here is the only one open, but it's picked off by Floyd Jr. And there is absolutely nobody stopping him on the way to the end zone. South Carolina pick six already up two possessions in the early minutes of the game. All right, now we got to rely on Johnson's legs, get his confidence back up, and he's going to skip to the outside, but there's nowhere to run. South Carolina really doing a great job containing his legs as he only gets two here, but he's looking to throw yet again, trying to find somebody open, going to find Barrett Jr. in the flat spin move. He's going to get the first down, showing his ability to a little bit loosen this in between the catches, and on a speed option, we fumble it, trying to get him the ball and everywhere on offense is just not working out right now. But here we go, trying to get Johnson's confidence as Hoskins is open on the corner and a beautiful throw on the right sideline, gets us 21 yards on that third down. Now, once again, Johnson still looking back to throw. Nobody's open and tries to force it to Camry and Johnson, but Blanton is on him like white on rice, elementary school, Elmer's glue, you name it. He was just on him. Camry couldn't get any separation. Another turnover with South Carolina still dropping back to throw, but we eventually get a sack, sending all the pressure in the world for Trudeau Berry to wrap him up. Now, empty set now for South Carolina and Doty. He still has all day in the pocket. We're trying to rival everywhere with CJ Taylor, but Martel Height wraps him up. We get a three and out, huge stop by our defense to get the ball back. And Barrett Jr., our electrifying weapon on special teams. Now he's got the speed to the outside. Can he move maneuver? He can down the sideline. One more block by Trudeau Berry, and he's going to be gone for a touchdown. First game, first real major touch with space and he gets 63 yards to the house. But that won't stop South Carolina. They still have the lead, motioning a guy in the flat. Now there's Elksness on the corner route. Taylor can't tackle him. Fontenay can't tackle him either. They're just running in front of the people, and he's going to get 48 yards already in our territory. But now Doty looking to scramble. Brian Longwell can't tackle him, and it just seems like we like to run in front of guys and not wrap up. Now in the I formation, handing it to McDowell, we have struggled stopping the run as he punches CJ Taylor, gets up for Nolte, and come here, Fontenay. 17 yards, stiff arming, and breaking three tackles on that run alone. Cox coming in motion, gonna hit it in the flat, and there's nobody covering him. He easily walks into the end zone, and now they're back to a two possession lead. Now we gotta do something on offense. Johnson's still looking to throw the ball, but pressure's coming at him in all different ways. So he's gonna use his legs to scramble inside, outside, and eventually does get the first down, 13 yards showing his electric ability to maneuver when plays break down and he's still going to drop back to throw here yet again finding jeremiah dylan on the curl he spins the wrong way but he still gets 14 and another first down before giving it to barrett he spins shows his elusiveness and now that's a gain of 11 and we are driving johnson once again a triple option this time he pitches to mcveigh but jeremiah dylan can't block that safety or else mcveigh would have been gone now johnson third down dropping back to throw yet again he's gonna find skinner jr on the cor corner route excuse me but he's gonna get 23 yards another key third down conversion for this offense before Johnson walks his way into the end zone, cuts the lead down to seven. Luke Doty actually would not be done yet. He's going to look to his right, and Darren Agu comes off the quarterback contain, sacks him yet again, and our defense is starting to bow up. But now our offense has the ball back, and Nate Johnson's got to get something going, tries to find McVay, but he's picked off for the third time by Emin Worry, and our offense is just in all sorts of funk right now. Before Doty sits there looking to run now, Fontenay's going to get him, but he shrugs him off 
getting nine yards on the quarterback scramble and he's gonna play action mcdowell once again gonna unleash a missile to omega blake in between two defenders and they're storming on our goal line yet again before tossing it to mcdowell nobody's on the outside easy touchdown for mcdowell and they're back up by two possessions before we get the ball back yet again trying to use johnson's legs to get any sorts of momentum for our offense he's gonna get 13 yards another conversion just gotta build off of this and now johnson's still looking to throw trying to get his confidence back up but the pressure is just too much before giving it to barrett he's gonna be shy of the change bringing up a fourth and four but we do indeed decide to go for it we're down by two possessions with 44 seconds left in the half johnson nobody open yet again trying to scramble but they do a great job containing him blanton that linebacker that got the pick shoves him out of bounds south Carolina ball with Doty still looking to throw finding Sampson nobody around him in the flat and they're already in field goal range but he's still looking to throw gonna find Elk since he had that big gain earlier they're not gonna call they do call a timeout another first down they're storming looking to score a touchdown eight seconds left now Doty's looking to scramble height shuts him off he's gonna stumble but gets down with two seconds left which is gonna set up a field goal to end the in the first half they're gonna be up 31 to 14 but we do get the ball back at halftime. But we need to do something here. We're down by 17 points. Johnson's still looking to find somebody, anybody. Nobody can get separation. He's going to be inches shy of the sticks before once again, another handoff to Barrett Jr. And Bland is there yet again to stuff our opportunity for a first down. But we're going to go for it. Use Johnson's legs this time as we get the sticks and get another conversion. He slides down to avoid a big hit. Johnson still looking back to throw. Got to get something going. And he's going to find Quincy Skinner as he comes back to the football to prevent another interception. A gain of 21. And now yet again, third down. Finding Jeremiah Don. He cuts up field. No fancy movement. Just get those sticks. Get above it. And get another first down. And yet again, we're looking at another third down. Third and nine right here. Can we find anybody? gonna find hoskins in the flat can he sh shed a tackle he does but he gets stuffed yet again fourth and four now once again still gonna find mcveigh over the middle can he get into the end zone no he is brought down at the one yard line but a key slant by him that good connect between johnson mcveigh sets us up at the one and we empty it out the entire set five receivers out wide so johnson can walk into the end zone cuts it down to 10 and now we got to rely on our defense. Doty looking to throw. Can our defense stop him? No, he's going to shake and bake. Run down Fontenay and uh, touch and Russell. And nobody's going to be able to tackle him until Colby Taylor eventually does. But not before he gets to the 15-yard line. And Doty just absolutely cooked our defense on the ground before dotting again to Omega Blake, putting them on the goal line. And yet again, another handoff to McDowell. He reads his blocks beautifully. And it's back to a 17-point lead. Our defense can't stop a nosebleed. But we're going to try a screen here and it almost gets picked off before Jeremiah Dillon gets wrestled down only for a gain of four. Now, I like the look of Hoskins on the corner route. Johnson's going to find actually Skinner Jr. on the curl. He spins forward, gets tackled down for a gain of 14. Another conversion when we needed it the most on third down before looking to throw again on third down. Johnson's going to scramble because nobody's open. He has the speed and he gets nine yards, just barely moving past those chains. Still looking back to throw yet again. He's going to find Dylan on the corner route. He barely toe taps his foot down. And yet again, he's going to try it again. But Dylan can't get that right foot down this time. Going to bring up another fourth and short. And if it isn't broke, why fix it? So we're going to run it back a read option, but they don't block that outside defender. Johnson's trying to run for his life for, to get break a tackle, but he's going to lose nine yards, giving South Carolina the ball. And this might be all she wrote. Our defense forces a third down with Doty looking to throw. He's going to find Blake out on the short route and he falls over a man getting 11 yards. And it's just not our day today as Dow is going to get the handoff. CJ Taylor misses the tackle. Ken Fontenay brings him down. He eventually shoves him out of bounds. But he's at the 10-yard line after a gain of 38. And Doty looking to throw yet again. We are covering everywhere. But McDowell cuts across the face of the defense. Gets the touchdown pass. And it is 44-21. And we might be done. Who knows? Johnson trying to write back for this Vanderbilt offense. Hits Jeremiah Dillon on a curl. He spins the right way this time. Getting a huge gain to the 45-yard line. But Johnson still not done. Trying to find anybody that can get open. So he's going to have to take it himself. He gets plenty of yards. Cuts to the outside. And nobody's going to be able to stop him. He gets to the end zone. A 45-yard scramble. And if we had more of that earlier in the game, we may have been in the lead. But yet, we still can't find a way to stop McDowell. They hand it off to the outside. And he gets great blocks. And Davion Davis just shoestring tackles him. 
saving yet another touchdown. Now handing it right back to McDowell, he's gonna break one tackle and channel his inner beast mode, breaking another one and spinning before finding his way to the end zone. And now the South Carolina has put up 52 points on our defense. But we're not giving up just yet. Gonna find Cameron Johnson out of desperation, who spins and gets forward for a gain of 18. Before once again standing in the pocket, but they sent a corner blitz on Johnson's scramble, sacking him for a loss of 16 putting us second and forever. Johnson looking to throw, finds McVay in the corner route, and he's gonna get tackled just shy of the sticks. Gonna bring up a fourth and short situation. For Johnson's gonna scramble again, trying to find anybody. He's gonna throw it across his body to Joseph McVay, who's there on the catch, coming back to the quarterback, putting us back in South Carolina territory before finding Jeremiah Dillon on the corner route, getting tackled at about the 13 yard line. And that connection will continue as Jeremiah Dillon comes back on the comeback route, gets the end zone for a wide open pitch and catch, but it's too little too late at this point. It's 52-33. We are gonna try to go for two to make it a 17 point game, but they're on Dillon so much, he's gonna bat it down. That is O'Donnell Fortune, not allowing Dillon to cash in. It's gonna be another onside kick. We did this well against Florida, trying to see if we can recover it yet again but it's Omega Blake recovering the onside kick, and that's gonna be all she wrote here against South Carolina. As McDowell is gonna take this handoff, gets another touchdown, and they almost put 60 on our heads. Now, Nate Johnson on the day, he did have 296 passing yards, one touchdown, but he also had four interceptions on the day. We can't win with that many turnovers. But on the ground, he did have three touchdowns, only 90 yards today. South Carolina did a real good job at containing him. Dylan was the bright spot of our team. He had 111 yards and a touchdown. Everybody else got to step up like he did today. Defensively, Randon Fontenay actually led us in tackles with six. And TFL, CJ Taylor led us with two with Tyson Russell, Longwell, Barry, Rinaldi, and Agu following him. And Agu and Barry led our team with a sack each. Barry Jr. did show off his speed and electricity as he had a 62-yard punt return with his only punt return of the day. We cannot win if we allow quarterbacks like Luke Doty to throw for 215 passing yards, three touchdowns without throwing an incompletion, and McDowell with 158 yards and four total touchdowns on the day, with Doty adding 85 more yards on the ground. That was one tough matchup against South Carolina, but now we got to recollect our thoughts, recollect ourselves before heading on the road to Kentucky. Now that game did bring us down the fourth in the SEC East with a 4-2 conference record and a 6-2 record overall. And Kentucky is significantly better than us with 86 versus our 79. But they do come in 0-6 in conference play with a 1-7 record, so that gives me a little bit more confidence. The theme of our offense this episode has been third downs, but Johnson delivers to McVay in the face of pressure. He tries cutting across, but gets tackled down, but not before a gain of 23. Once again, we are going to hand it off, but in a read option format, Johnson, he runs Runs into his own offensive lineman, gets seven yards. We needed the offensive lineman to really kick out that safety, but we're looking to throw here, trying to find somebody that's going to be open. We're going to hit Dylan underneath, and he barely gets the first down right at midfield. Johnson looking to throw yet again, finds Hoskins in the face of more pressure, but we find our one-on-one -on -one situations. Hoskins gets 19, burns the safety on the out route, and Johnson looking to scramble yet again, just trying to get the first down as nobody opens. He slides to avoid an injury. Converts yet again with his speed. And now looking to throw yet again. Nobody's going to be open. Almost gets sacked, but finds Camry and Johnson. Johnson to Johnson. It's a family company for Vanderbilt. 6 nothing early against Kentucky. Now Kentucky coming out in an I formation, surprisingly. Going to hand the ball off to McClain. Jukes on McClain. Jukes out everybody on our defense. And he may be gone, but we finally wrap him up. But not before a gain of 20. And if it's going to be like this, it's going to be a long day for our defense. But still, Sharon looking back to throw everywhere with Rinaldi trying to cover the running back, but he's just too slow as he sheds his tackle, punches Taylor in the face before Tyson Russell can bring him down. But now McLean getting another hand up. He's got wide open lanes to the outside, sprints up field before Tyson Russell hogs him down. Another touchdown saving tackle, but he's just ripping apart our defense for multiple huge gains and gets to the outside, punches Taylor in the face again before Longwell can finally bring him down. Now, once again, Sharon looking to throw. Can he find anybody in a fumble? Trudel Berry brings him down. We've been sending him on more blitzes and a strip sack happens, but they end up recovering. Gonna bring up a third and long. And here we are in third and long. Nowhere for him to throw. He's standing all day in the pocket, but he finds Barry and Brown in the corner of the end zone. We needed to get more pressure on the quarterback as Kentucky ties the game up at seven but now we have momentum in our favor but it's second and 11 johnson trying to find anybody he's getting pressured all day long so far but his speed is going to allow him to get into shy of the chains as he has a thousand yards rushing from a quarterback spot on the season and another triple option time but he gets hawked down fourth and one 
and we actually punt the ball back to Kentucky. Now, he's looking to throw. True Dell Berry, baby. He is making plays everywhere. Gets the ball back for our offense. He's got a sack and a pick already so far. But now Johnson looking back to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Finds Skinner Jr. One of his better pocket presence plays of the season to get another first down. Johnson again looking to throw. Trying to find anybody open over the middle. Puts a dot just past the linebacker. Joseph Vivier spins and gets tackled on the goal line. And that might be one of Johnson's best throws of the season. He let it just far enough to where McVay can get the ball and pass the linebacker to prevent an interception. And once again, we empty out everybody so Johnson can just run it up the middle himself. Nobody touches him before he gets into the end zone for a five-yard touchdown run. And he sets a school record at the top for 14 rushing touchdowns on the year. And McLean gets another handoff. And again, a huge game before Fontenay can bring him down, but not before a gain of 13. Sharon looks to throw yet again. Can CJ Taylor make a play? And he rips the ball out at the last second. What a play from our star safety. And Sharon looking to throw yet again, but we are everywhere. We read that quarterback's eyes. Give me those cookies. Ran Don Fontenay with the user lurk, baby. Getting our second pick of the day and that might be tied for the most interceptions we've had all season long but yet johnson gonna run a triple option with mcveigh coming in motion gonna see if we can work something out with this one they're gonna take mcveigh and johnson's eventually gonna pitch at the bear jr and he's got nothing but space ahead of him with that 94 speed cuts it inside back the outside and that's a touchdown that's the easiest way for defense to lead the early offense and barrett shows his explosiveness on the long touchdown run and sharon looking to throw yet again but bj diakite i don't know what's going on with our defense but they seem to wake up from my challenge and that is our first pick six of the season three interceptions and we're not even out of the first half and we are up 28 to 7 against kentucky before mcclain takes a huge run up the middle trying to get the momentum back for the wildcats and mcclain gets another huge carry breaks off a tackle a gain of 15 and we can't simply hold him to a rush under 10 yards. And once again, a read option, but BJ Diakite is there. We sent more pressure off the left side in case they run a read option, but they decide to kick a field goal, but Barrett Jr. is there to field it. He's going to try to do his best Chris Davis impersonation as he's got open sidelines on the left side, but gets brought down at the 32-yard line. Before we get the ball back, and Johnson's looking to scramble, but finds a man deep as Jeremiah Dillon lays out on the SEC logo. A gain of 44 before Nate Johnson takes the read option, and we are starting to roll. A gain of 12 before eventually finding Jeremiah Dillon on the beautiful toe drag swag as we have put up 35 and a half. And Kentucky looking to get momentum back as Barry and Brown catches the flat route, and CJ Taylor eventually brings him down before a gain of 21. Now, Sharon looking back to throw yet again and gets brought down by Rinaldi. Third and 14. Sharon looking to throw again, but Wright got toasted by Josh Caddis on the seam route. And we bring him back down as Trudeau Berry on the pressure as Sharon is still looking back to throw and is set to tackle before finding Barry and Brown. But it was illegal touching and they had to get the ball back. But our first play back, we get sacked for a safety before Sharon is still looking back to throw yet again. He magwa toast Longwell before finding Josh Caddis, bringing the score to 35 to 16 right at halftime. Fresh out of half, Sharon's looking to throw. He's going to find Utah McLean just ahead of the sticks for a gain of eight before running a draw, and we tackle him finally in the backfield for a loss of two. But now Sharon's still looking to throw, trying to find anybody. Finds Magwood, who's going to be stopped shy of the sticks. Kentucky's forced to punt the ball back to us, and we're going to try to extend our lead with another read option. Johnson reads the hole beautifully, got an edge to the left side before finally being hawked down, but not before a gain of 31. And Johnson's still looking to scramble. They have not found a way to contain him. He's going to cut outside, trying to make a way to the end zone. But he gets a gain of 17 before finding a screen to Quincy Skinner Jr. with beautiful blocking. And now it is 42 to 16. We are utterly beating down the Wildcats right now. But Sharon's going to try to put his team back into it. But we eventually bring him down with Barry before he looks back to throw yet again to find Caddis in the flats. And he's eventually going to get the first down as we didn't have anybody out there and Sharon's looking to throw. We send another blitz and Barry and Brown shed the tackle and races his way almost to the end zone before CJ Taylor hawks him down, but not before a gain of 44 and Taylor makes up for it with an interception. We send a blitz. It was man coverage across the board. He read the quarterback's eyes, got the interception before Barrett Jr. spins forward for a gain of 12 and Johnson's going to keep the read option for himself with great blocking ahead for another first down. 
as Barrett Jr. is going to get great blocks yet again. Races away from the defense for a 30 yard touchdown run puts him at 99 yards on the day but now Juton McClain is going to get the draw on third and four but we eventually hound him up ground him up for a gain of one gonna get the ball back as Skinner almost makes a beautiful grab here but we tested the coverage too much then we're gonna have to get the ball back to Kentucky and Sharon's looking to throw gonna find Magwood underneath and we are not quick enough to keep up with him Chauncey Magwood for a gain of 18 as Sharon is looking back to throw yet again, going to find Josh Kettis on the side and forget a 14 and gives it to McLean. And he stutters and steps his way all the way to the end zone. Nobody can wrap him up for a 36 yard touchdown run. Cuts the lead down to 26 before Johnson steps in the pocket, finds Joseph McVay yet again to bring in the fourth and one. And we do indeed decide to go for it because it's just fourth and one. So why not? And a triple option leads Johnson to get in the end zone as we put up 56 on the Kentucky Wildcats as Johnson finished with 227 yards, three touchdowns on the day. That's what we need to see from the Heisman favorite and adding 128 yards on the ground with two touchdowns and Barrett also added 117 yards and two touchdowns as well. His best game of the season, two games in at running back, already a hundred yard rushing game, really spreading the wealth out through the air. We only passed for 200 something yards, but our receiver stepped up, built separation and on defense, Trudeau Barry with three, two TFLs, Die cut with three TFLs and Barry with two sacks, as well as Zaylen Wood and Rinaldi with a sack. And our defense, four interceptions. I think that matched our previous season total for this for the year with four already in one game alone. And after this game, we got three commits: Kent Brown, Anthony Miller, and Damon Dubzinski, all gonna help our teams next season. But Tennessee is still better than us with B plus overall rating, but we do have Lee Corso in our favor due to Nate Johnson's performance last week with five total touchdowns, moving up to number two on the Heisman watch, only behind Donovan Edwards. Now Tennessee coming with an 88 overall with 91 offense and 85 defense, but we still have to watch out for 92 overall Jalen Wright as running backs have been our Achilles heel all season long. Even though Tennessee is one and eight, I know we're still going to go against studs with Nico Amaliva at quarterback because he's going to hit Lecoq in the flat. He sheds one two before finally getting shoved out of bounds for a gain of 18 but we send a blitz with Trudeau Barry bringing him down for a loss of six and then it's going to bring up a third and 15 we're everywhere with blanketed coverage as he's going to hit somebody underneath that's going to be Jake Burrell but not but that brings up a fourth down giving us the ball back and we're going to give it to Barrett Jr. he's going to go up the middle for a gain of 10 before Nate Johnson keeps it on this mid line option and he spins to the outside and can he be stopped he's got an open path to the end zone but he does eventually gets hawked out of bounds at the three yard line before looking up and finding Camryon Johnson in the corner of the end zone. And within three plays, we are already up seven against Tennessee. But now Nico's gonna try to drop back once again. I wanted Trudeau Bear to get that interception, but he finds Burrell for a gain of 12 before running a triple option. And we tackle him in the backfield. Trudeau Barry makes up for that last play, tackling Nico for a loss of six, bringing up second and long. But before then we rush with Darren Agu and he finds Squirrel White, <laughs> underneath and he only gets 12 yards gonna force another punt for Tennessee getting us the ball back and Nate Johnson is gonna find Joseph McVay on the seam who tries to spin biggest tackle down but not before a gain of 39 and he tries to scramble once again but runs into his own tackle for a loss of seven and we're gonna have to give the ball back to Tennessee but Nico's gonna look to drop back yet again gonna find right in the flat this time and Fontenay finally brings him down but Jalen Wright gets 16 and he gets a toss here but he hit stick when Rinaldi just like one of those old Madden drills like a Madden 24 in the training camp with the linebackers. But Wright's going to make up for it to the outside. Jukes out Fontenay. And eventually CJ Taylor brings him down, but not before a gain of 23. And Nico's going to find Webman, the flight who leaps in the air to get it. But she gets shoved out of bound for a gain of 11. And Nico's still looking back to throw. Tyson Russell gets absolutely burned. And Nathan Lecoq drags his cock all over us. And they tie the game at 7. And Nate Johnson airmails Richie Hoskins on 3rd and 7 with Tennessee Volunteers now getting all the momentum back and Nico's gonna scramble and look how big this man is he shuts off one tackle and runs through another for a gain of 16 and on this read option he's got space all the way to the outside misses on BJ Dykite stiff arms Fontenay before CJ Taylor can bring him down now Nico's still looking back to throw gonna find Dickens in the flat he's got everywhere to run and CJ finally does bring him down not before a gain of 20 before Nico's looking back to throw, and we are here with CJ Taylor. Give me that user pick. We read your eyes all the way there. But now, Johnson gonna run a triple option. Now he's gonna spin forward yet again and try to juke forward. Gets 15, using his legs to the best of our abilities. We're gonna hit Quincy Skinner underneath, who spins and absolutely shoves the man on the ground. 
for another first down before getting this corner out out to the outside and getting another gain of 26 as Nate Johnson is going to look to scramble but find Skinner yet again for three straight dimes and eventually a 27 yard touchdown now Tennessee going to try to run a jet sweep with Webb and he's going to get tackled for a loss of four thanks to our stifling defense all of a sudden and Burrell is going to shed a tackle here and CJ brings him down another three and out forcing us to get the ball back Johnson's going to look to throw somewhere try to find anybody open he does not using his speed yet again for a gain of 13 before this play action pass he's going to look over the middle find McVay who takes a brutal hit but hangs onto the football putting us in Tennessee's red zone now Johnson's still going to throw third and four finding Richie Hoskins burns the safety on the one-on-one -on -one corner route and we are up 21 to 7 in a rivalry game against the one and eight volunteers now we do get the ball back gonna run a speed option with Barrett Jr he's gonna pitch it to him before getting another first down we can just get everything we can at will before finding McVay on the out route for a gain of 13 now another midline option with Nate Johnson can he get to the corner and he does eventually but he fumbles but our offensive lineman Delphin Castillo recovers the fumble and Nate Johnson is going to make up for this or try to make up for it before getting sacked for a loss of 13. Nate trying to make up for the previous blunder. He's going to find Hoskins over the middle. What a dime on the dig, putting us third and one. And he's going to hand it to Barrett Jr. who cuts it up, just barely gets the first down before we empty everybody out. And he walks in untouched for yet another rushing score. Tennessee gonna try a triple option and Nico's got space to run all by himself before Martel Height finally brings him down for again at 20. And they run a pitch, but we are there with Trudeau Berry. He sets the edge and tackles Jalen Wright for a loss of six. Now Tennessee trying to run a screen on third and 17, gonna find Webb, but he's gonna be tackled just shy of the chains. Fourth and five, giving the ball back to us. Now Nate trying to scramble yet again to find anybody. Can he, and he does, he floats it to Quincy Skinner yet again. The main man, the main connection for this game, a huge pickup of 25 before scrambling yet again and delivering a huge deep missile to Richie Hoskins, who mauls the man and gets hit after coming down on the ground. And we run yet another triple option, and he somehow pitches at Hoskins, who spins to the outside, and he's just not fast enough to get to the end zone. A gain of 20, and Nate Johnson is going to scramble out to the right and cuts inside to convert yet again on third and five and now once again a slant route quick to jeremiah dillon exporting our key matchups and it is a complete blowout here 34 to 7 as we sack nico on the screen attempt bringing up third in the distance back to nashville tennessee before nico stands in the pocket trying to find anybody somewhere and right drops an interception that could have been another pick six as we run yet another triple option to barrett jr easy conversions as the Tennessee defense couldn't stop the run before Johnson steps up in the pocket scrambles yet again for himself for a huge pickup now a speed option in Tennessee just simply does not want to tackle Nate Johnson easy pass to the end zone and who would have thought Vanderbilt would be blowing out Tennessee 42 to 7 but Nico gets sacked yet again on second and inches shedding off tackles before he brought him down and on a play action he finds Squirrel White who's going to shed off a tackle and I guess every squirrel eventually does find a nut as he's going to get into the end zone, cutting the lead down to 28. So now Tennessee does indeed get the ball back. We went three and out on offense. They're going to try to run a speed option, only getting eight yards with Nico before he looks to drop back to throw. And he's going to go deep as Truesdale got absolutely burned. We had backups in and there's Nathan Wilcock again, dragging his cock all over us. But this final score would be Vanderbilt 42, Tennessee 21 with Nate Johnson having 255 yards and four touchdowns, only getting sacked twice. And on the ground, he added 140 more yards and two touchdowns, only 14 attempts, but his average yards per carry were right at 10. And Barry Jr. added 53 yards on the ground as well. Through the air, we really spread the well, spread the love, but Quincy Skinner was there, four catches, 90 yards and a touchdown. McVay was 78, Hoskins with 54 and a touchdown, and Jeremiah Dillon had a touchdown as well. Defensively, CJ Taylor still led us with tackles with eight at seven by himself, and TFL's Trudeau Barry was sending him on more blitzes. He had four TFLs with Ronaldi with three, and each of them had a sack as well. And Davion Darris and Darren Agu joined on the sack party too. For interception, CJ Taylor had another pick this game. He had one last game, and our defense is starting to finally create turnovers that we should have had earlier in the season. And this is the first time all year long we've allowed under 100 total rushing yards with Nico only with 40, Jalen Wright in 49, Webb with loss of four, and Squirrel White with eight. If we can keep this up, then we can really go a long way in the foreseeable future. But don't forget, if you enjoy those three games, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe down below, and also comment who you think is going to win March Madness.
But don't forget, subscribe. Trying to hit a thousand subs before EA Sports College Football 25 comes out. But until then, will we play Wake Forest and number six ranked Oklahoma? I'm out. See ya.